become all vegans. <laughs> all vegans. You need to conjugate here <laughs> yeah. at this place. Like, I would never expect a bloke looking like you. You look kind of sort of rough, really, yeah. like a man's man. I used to be, to be making. Did you? Originally, yeah. You enjoying your Saturday? Oh, Absolutely no. fantastic. Yeah. Oh my. That is absolutely outstanding. Good afternoon everyone and welcome to another episode of A Day in the UK and today I am in Braintree which is in the larger district of Braintree and the larger county of Essex and we are starting right here at the Braintree and Bocking Public Gardens. So Braintree and Bocking Gardens opened in 1888 and they were a gift from the Courtauld family to the people of Braintree. George Courtall, the gifted engineer, established in 1799 a silk throwing business in a water powered mill at Pebmarsh. Samuel Courtall III, George's eldest son, took it upon himself to transform the family silk business into one of the greatest industrial stories of the 19th century. It was in 1825 when Samuel's brothers George and John Minton joined the firm that the family decided to start making crepe, which is crimped silk gauze the textile which would make the company famous. They became known by the mid 19th century as Samuel Courtauld & Co. And in the early 20th century, the company pioneered the production of artificial silk, later to be known as rayon, which revolutionized fashion and also wash day in the homes of millions. I'll tell you what I've noticed that's a really nice touch in these gardens. There are QR codes next to all the trees and the flowers and the shrubs and so on, which means all you have to do is take your camera out on your phone, scan it on that QR code, and it gives you all the information about the different varieties of plants and flowers. I think it's a really nice touch. Right, I'm now off to the town centre, so let's find out what's going on there, shall we? Right, so I've just arrived at the town centre and I've parked in the Tesco's, but the thing that really stands out for me is this beautiful building here. It looks like the town hall, I believe. Okay, so I took the council a little bit by surprise, but they've been great and they've given me permission for 10, 15 minutes to walk around the building. Straight away, you can tell how old this is. So opulent, it's beautiful. So originally, the business of the town was conducted in the vestry hall at St. Michael's Lane, Braintree. But in the 1920s, the idea of building a purpose-built town hall was proposed and the historic site in the old marketplace was selected. The building was the gift of William Julian Courtauld, who wanted to create a grand civic building to raise the standard of local values, both in architectural and artistic expression. What we got here, the council chamber. So before the council added any new meeting rooms, this is initially where all of the councillors sat. This is where they originally had meetings. Christ, look at this. Look at these incredible paintings. These paintings depicted the history of the township of Braintree were presented by William Julian Courtauld, JPCC, in the year of our Lord, 1930. This mural depicts the sailing of the Braintree Company aboard the Leon ship for New England in 1632. They landed at Boston on the 12th of September and founded a town close by in Massachusetts that they named Braintree. The Braintree Company consisted of many local Puritans as well as people from further afield in Essex. This portrait shows John Ray, the famous naturalist who was probably the most eminent man that Braintree and the adjourning parishes have ever produced. He was born in Blacknotley in 1628 and frequently visited Braintree to see his friend Dr Benjamin Allen who lived in a house in Great Square that is now the Constitutional Club. Okie dokie, I've got a little bit of time now to go into the lounge. So I'm told this acts as a registry office. This is where you sign your wedding certificate, I believe. And I saw a couple, they've just got married here, so this is where they would have been, I'm sure. 
So if you fancy inquiring about a town hall marriage ceremony, take a look at braintreetownhall.co.uk for three wedding package choices, Community, Courtauld and Rushbury. Okay, my time has run out the town hall. What a gorgeous place. I'm gonna check out some other little surprises around the town center. Let's do it. Right, so I said I'd take you to a little surprise and I came across this online, right? It's one of those little nuggets. Look at this. This is the old Braintree lockup. Look at this, it's called the Braintree Cage. Built as an overnight lockup for the restraint of the drunk and disorderly in use 1840 to 1875. So drunkenness and disorderly behavior during market days and Braintree's October Fair was already a significant problem. But then in 1830, due to the very liberal Beer Act, 30 new public houses opened in Braintree. So you can imagine, people were getting drunk all the time which resulted in this. This was needed. Built sometime after 1840, the Braintree Cage was approached from Hilly Gant. Gant being a local term for passage, which links St Michael's Lane with New Street. New Street was notorious at the time with four pubs, three of which were known colloquially as Little Hell, Great Hell and Damnation. The cage remained in use until 1875. Right, let's head over to Braintree's hidden gem, the Flitch Way. Right, so I'm now one of my favorite places in Braintree and it's called the Flitch Way. And it's an old railway route that you can walk and cycle through all the way to Bishop Stalford. It's fantastic. So you've got about 15 miles between Braintree and Bishop Stalford. The line opened in 1869, it closed in 1974. And you know the beautiful thing about this is you get such a sense of history as you walk along this old line. You pass under really old bridges and also there are still platforms from back in the day that still exist. One particular is Rain Station. Rain Station still exists, you can go to the platform and the, and the actual train station is now called the Booking Hall Cafe. You can get fantastic sandwiches and coffee there, it's brilliant. And outside the front of the station is an old train which now doubles up as a museum. It really is a stunning walk. Right, I'd love to walk it now but I'm going to get off to the town centre because I believe it's market day today. So I'm looking forward to that, I'll see you there. Right, so we've just come out of the George Yard Shopping Centre and lucky for me, today is the Saturday market. So let's get stuck in, shall we? Here we go. Hello, buddy. Hello, bud. Are these your candles? Yes, we make them all ourselves. Oh, there. really? Yeah. Made from 100% natural soy. Yes. Explain that. What is that? That is actually a plant. Right. A plant, right. Yep. I've never heard of a soy yep. candle. Soy candle, yeah. They're soot if, free. They don't soot or nothing. Vegan. Like um, other, other candles. They're vegan. Come all vegans. <laughs> all vegans. <laughs> you need to conjugate here. <laughs> yeah. At this place. Light by night. Was it, yeah, yeah. What, was it light, light by, by night? Light yeah. by night. We'll we'll see, you later. Later. see you later. Take care, guys. So we've got a right character. What's your name, anyway? Darren. Darren, nice to meet you, mate. Nice to meet, nice you. To meet you. So tell me about this this business you got you got here and what your story is. Because well, you're selling cake. Do you make these cakes? Basically, yes, I do make these cakes. That's amazing, mate. And you're not just here, obviously. You no, sort of... I no, I only do here on a Wednesday and a Saturday. Do you? Every week. Brilliant. So is this like a lockdown business then? So yes, basically, yes, started out of business. And it's become a success. It has come a success. But why 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 cakes then? Was it always something that you did? Yes, I've always been into baking. Have used you? To, I used to make cakes for Costa years ago. I, I would never expect a bloke looking like you. You look kind of sort of rough, really, yeah. like a man's man. I used to be, to be making. Did you? Originally, yeah. Uh, and <laughs> I was going to say, look, from that, some... yeah, more tattoos, yeah. It's really weird because it breaks the stereotype. Yeah. And a lot of people turn around and say to me, yeah. To my, to my wife, said, you make them? <laughs> she goes, no, they wouldn't look like that if it was me, she said. <laughs> so it's true. Like, yeah. It is true that you have yeah. a stereotype yeah, about the sort yeah. of person that makes cakes, and you've yeah. just busted that, mate. Yeah, well, fair indeed. play to you. What's the Facebook page? Uh, Absolute Dream Cakes. Absolute Dream Cakes. Yeah. Well done, bud. Yeah. Hello, bud, do you make your own pickle? I do, fella. Do you? Did you set this up? Kind of five years now. About five years? Yeah. yeah? What was the story? Uh, story? A hobby that went wrong. Did it? Go on. Yeah, that is exactly it. Making them for Christmas presents. Yeah. And then everyone started demanding them and that was it. All of a sudden, there we are. That is the story you want to hear. Something just came out of just a bit of fun, really. And, and wanted to give your family a bit of, yeah, something a bit nice. 
a spiced pumpkin fudge. Hello there, my friend. Oh, How mate, first you? off, look at that beard. It badly needs to, but thank you anyway. No, no, you're rocking it, mate. That is amazing. So, when you, who set this up? Is it yourself? It was me, yeah. Was it? Yeah. It started as gifts for friends and family, and yeah. evolved into this, really. And this is your main living? Yes. Well done. Right, check this out, right? There's this place called Toast, and I think it's brand new. Is Toast new? Is it a new place? Reasonably. Reasonably. Yeah. Have you had it? Have you had any, any toast? That's where we're going. <laughs> Is it? Is it good? Yeah. Would you recommend it? Yeah. Would you recommend the coffee? Yeah. There you go. How about yourself? Yeah, definitely. Is that what you're going for? Yeah, it's what we're heading now. Oh, mate. <laughs> Lovely. There, there's a Costa right next door. So basically, a local business here, Toast, are competing with the Costa next door. And it, and winning as well, yeah? yeah. <laughs> you're local girls, right? Yeah. yeah. Right, so you've seen a bit of bit of change going on. You said there's some sort of regeneration going on here. Yeah, they're, re they're redoing all the high street. Yeah, this all used to be yeah. modernizing it. So Did it? No buses yeah. anymore. No, oh, there used to be buses going down here? Yeah. yeah. And okay. then the bus parks being, I think they're building a hotel and okay. some other stuff, shops maybe. But I think that's controversial. Why? because I think it was nice. Some people feel, I'm not gonna say which side I'm on, but feel it was nice when it was just a small bus park with local businesses around it. Do you think like, do you think what it is that people don't like change? People I think don't definitely really like change. people don't like change. Yeah, To a yeah. certain extent. And people will complain either way, because people complain when it's all charity shop, yeah. but they also complain when it's modernised. So. Of course. But that's just people, including right, myself. We're it's all a like matter that. of perspective, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I quite like it. I feel like, like it's it. quite Mediterranean. Ladies, it's been lovely to speak to you. You too. Let's get twisted. Pretty obvious what you're selling. <laughs> These look amazing though. So, what is this Oreo Scotch egg? Yeah, so it's got an Oreo egg in yeah. the middle of it, and then yeah, it's yeah. wrapped in a brownie buttercream mix of rolled in Oreo crumbs. Is this an original invention by you? Um, you do see them at other places, but right. I like to think I was the one who started it. See you later, lovely. Bye. See ya. Hello, bud. Right, How you doing? Thank you. This is this is amazing. Who's this? Great grandmother. Yeah. Granddad, yeah, grandmother, go on. Is his brother? Here's a question for you. <laughs> Why have you got pictures of your it's called, relatives? Yeah, so it's called Nanny Violet's James. Yeah. Nanny Vi was my mum. Yeah. Jody, my daughter, who does all the cooking, and her brother Sean got hold of her recipe book uh, just prior to when she died. She'd lived to the age of 102. Yeah. So James and Sherry are good for you. That's all I can say. And uh, they've stuck to the old-fashioned way of making jams, chutneys, marmalades that she used to produce um, during the Second World War, basically. She's sitting on the stool. Jodie, come ah. wave. Oh, no! Listen! <laughs> I've just heard the story. You, you Jodie. Yeah. Jodie, nice to meet you, Adam. Hi, Adam. Nice to meet you. What, what a brilliant story. Isn't it? Oh, I love that story, yeah. I think it's amazing. <laughs> <laughs> Nanny Vi, she lived to 102. She was 102, yeah. Were well, you a dab hand at cooking before you no, had a go at I this, wasn't. no? You just got what? I suppose you got sort of passionate about it after you read I think that you book. I just pick it up. I just done yeah. it every summer with her, and then I just kind of picked it up with my brother. So she was actually teaching you as well. Yeah. Oh mate, that's amazing. Goat's milk soap. Hi. Is this you? This is me. Yes. Right. Yes. Irene has got a store called Goat in a Soap. Yes. yes. I've got to be honest, I can't stand goat's cheese. I don't like the smell. Has it got the smell? Well, oh, can, I, can I have a smell? You tell me. Well, no, it's lovely. That's lovely. Really, really nice. Yeah. And you make these all yourself? I do. Do you have a goat? I ha Well, there's a herd of goats near me. Yeah. Do you secretly milk the goats no. at night to get this? <laughs> No, no. I'm all about skincare. Okay. And skincare is most uh, important to me. Yeah. Because I had terrible eczema on my hands. Did you? Yes. And that's how I started. Was that the motivation then yes. to try and heal yes. yourself? Yeah. No. Well, I've had steroids for years and it didn't work. No, not good for you either. No. Terrible for your bones. So my niece in America has yeah. got a herd of goats. Yeah. So she sent me her goat's milk. So yeah. And my hands were better in two weeks. Goat's milk can alleviate a lot of the symptoms. Do you mean like the, the, the horrible itchiness yes. and stuff like that? Yeah, and the redness. And the redness. Soreness, yeah. Bye bye. Have a good day. Have a successful day. That's lovely. Thank you very bye. much. Bye bye. bye, bye, bye. Ruddy Marvellous. Now that's a name, isn't it? That's a name, isn't it? 
Ruddy Marvellous. Are you, are you Ruddy Marvellous? Is that why you called it that? Yeah, no, the surname's Rudd, so... Oh, I see. What do you do? Um, I make bags, elephants, aprons... Yeah? Anything. That's about you just threw that in there. I make bags, elephants. Well, the, elephant, the elephants breed. Yeah. <laughs> and there was rather a lot of them this morning. Did they do the elephants make bags as well? Well, well I'm sure one or two might be clever enough. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> hello, hello, sweetie, how are you doing? I'm alright, how are you? Yeah, I'm good, cheers. What you got here? I have uh, handmade resin oddities. You're very artistic, aren't you? <laughs> I am, yeah. How long's it this one's called? Thank you. There you go. Look, just check this out guys and girls, look. Isn't that cool? So that's lots of little shells from where? eBay. <laughs> from eBay? You are supposed to say, I collected them from South End Seafront. No, I don't, honestly, I don't have time. These take me so long to make <laughs> that I have to outsource some of the some of the fillings. What are you called? Olivia's Oddities. Olivia's Oddities. And look, card payments accepted as well. You look like a lovely person. What's your name? Edwina. Edwina, Edwina. What's, what's going on here then? All upcycled. All Except for the cushions. All the upcycled. Clothes. All the furniture is. Can you, what is, what is upcycling? We take a junky piece of furniture yeah. that somebody's going to put in landfill. Right. And you rescue it and you transform it into something beautiful. Tell me which, tell, give me a story to one of these that you've transformed. Right, suitcases. Right. Go on. They're usually all battered leather. Yeah. Yeah. And Go on. I get one covered in fabric there. I've got another one covered in wallpaper. Yeah. The briefcases I do. Yeah. Marvel characters on. I sell lots of briefcases. Marvel characters as well. Yeah. 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 Oh, that's a good seller, I bet. Yeah, it is. Actually. I bet. They go. Yeah. Of course they do. Businessmen buy them. Do they? Yep. Yeah. Lovely to meet you, Edwina. So you go, ladies. Is a giant stall here. Hello. Hello. DA fashions, I think they're called. But yeah, loads of different dresses and tops and bits and pieces. What an amazing market. Brilliant. Really great. Really enjoyed it. Just come across this fella, and, it, and I just thought I had to record it. Cause, say what you were just saying, bud. Well, it's good that Braintree Town's changing. 20 yeah. years ago, it used to be a lot of fighting. There's, really? more, there's more shops, there's more policing, and there's more homes for people who are homeless. It's just a massive improvements then massive as well. Massive improvement. Nice to meet you, bud. Too, Lovely to meet you. Buying and selling antiques, collectibles, jewellery, gold and silver. Let's take a look, shall we? Cheers. Where are you going on YouTube? Yeah. That's the, we did like Whitham and you did... That's it, YouTube. that's it. <laughs> do you work in here? I run this place. Welcome to the Bocking Oh, Arts mate. Theater. There you go, the Bocking Arts Theatre. Let's do it, let's oh, do it. <laughs> yeah, I'm coming in. Yeah, we've got, we run the comedy club. We've run it here since 2010. Oh, we've got... Oh, um, brilliant. Abba Revival coming. We've got loads of great shows. This is the Antique Centre. There's the um, antiques. Yeah, it's the antique. And what, what day is that usually on then, mate? It's like Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. Wednesday, uh, Thursday, uh, Friday and Saturday. Yeah. Yeah, let's do it, let's do it. We've got some amazing house DJs. All right, here we go. How's it going? It's a little house event, is it? Yeah, big house event. So you make, you do it, is it like old school house music? Yeah, really, yeah, yeah, mix. Bit of a mix, is it? Yeah, late 80s, house. So are you going to be running this every so often or so? Every month, once a month. Once a month, right, what's your name, bud? So Scott. Scott, once a month, is running this house music event here at the... The loft at the Bocking Arts Centre. The loft range here. Amazing, mate. So this is the theatre, yeah? This is it. Amazing venue. Oh, wow, look at this. Have a guess, how much do you think it costs to build this place? 500 quid? <laughs> Close. Really? Yeah, it's like two and a half grand. The Bocking Arts Theatre was built in 1863 as a gift from the Courtauld family to the people of Braintree, with events being hosted on the site since the 1950s. The theatre boasts professional pantomimes, Braintree Comedy Club, live music and many other events. So book yourself some tickets now on www.bockingartstheatre.com. What about you, mate? What, what, what brings you to this place and running this place? Uh, I've started running the comedy club here and I used to hire it um, from the council. The council used to own this building. Comedian? Are you a comedian? Yeah! Hiya, mate. I am. What's your sort of routine? Are you, are you like a host or, are you, or do yeah, you... Yeah, I'm hosting here and, you know, we get 200 people in here and everyone has a great time. It's been running... As I say, like ten and a half years. Oh, I host, I host other gigs and do spots here and there. I was in London the other night and go all over the country. I think I'm so proud of this building, and I think it's so good for the people of Braintree. And we do, we try and do so much for charity. We have stamp fairs, rock and roll nights. We have obviously the NHS blood donors come here, so people can come and give blood. Ah. So it's a multi-purpose venue. James, 
Absolute legend. Cheers, Adam. Lovely to meet you. Thanks for Mate, looking at the perfect. Podcast, Isn't it amazing when you find someone that passionate about what they do, what they love doing? James is an absolute legend. Right, let's get to the museum before it closes. Enjoying your Saturday? Oh, Absolutely yeah. fantastic. Yeah. You loving it? A bit of dummy, so. There you go. Welcome to the museum and the gift shop. Let's go in. So I'm just going to take you around the museum and see what we find. So nearby Braintree Town Centre, you've got Bradford Street, which is one of the oldest streets in Essex. And let me tell you, it has got fascinating history. The earliest existing buildings in Bradford Street date from the middle of the 14th century. But it was at the start of the 16th century that Bradford Street really began to shine. The woolen cloth manufacturers of Bocking began to specialise in a new finer type of cloth collectively known as the new draperies. The principal types were called bays and says. These fine cloths were a favorite in Portugal and Spain, but other manufacturing centers couldn't produce a cloth of similar quality. So Bocking had something of a monopoly for this trade. However, when the Bocking wool trade collapsed at the end of the 18th century, as a result of lost foreign markets and competition from the North Country, the prosperity of Bradford Street went into decline. So many of the wealthier Clothier families moved out of the area to concentrate on farming or banking, and as a result, much of the present day appearance of Bradford Street remains unchanged from that time. So if you haven't already taken a walk down Bradford Street, I urge you to go and check it out. It's got a feeling of a street frozen in time. You really get a sense of the history of a bygone era. Fantastic. Oh, this is this is pretty cool. This is Crittle Windows. It's a really big part of Braintree. So in 1849, at the age of 24, Francis Berrington Crittle purchased the ironmongers at 27 Bank Street, Braintree. He was soon the most successful ironmonger in Braintree. And in 1854, he opened a new branch in George Yard. His son Francis Henry Crittle would transform the company from Crittle Ironmongers into Crittle Windows, a worldwide manufacturing company. Francis Henry pioneered the first standardized engineered metal window that would propel the company to the global stage. Right, check this out. Inside the museum is an old school, Manor Street School. Now, obviously, Braintree District Museum. And look at this, this is the children in the class of 1908. But even better than that, here it is. This is the classroom. Isn't this amazing? Look at that. I wonder if we can find any graffiti on the desks that the kids have done. I wonder if these are the original desks. That's a really old seat and desk, isn't it? I think this is more like it, isn't it? This here, look. Oh yeah, there you go. Now we're talking. By 1890, an entry in Kelly's directory shows it was a board school for 500 children with an average attendance of 130 boys, 130 girls, and 95 infants. And in 1897, a separate building was added for the infants. Now I am starving, so that toast place looked interesting. Let's go and check it out, shall we? Okay. Hello. How you doing? <laughs> Good, how are you? Look at that smile. Look at that. Thank and what's you. your name, lovely? It's Rebecca. Rebecca. Adam, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. This is this is toast, so obviously you sell toast. We sell toast. We sell toast and toasties. We can yep. do like sausage onion and cheese toasty, cheese and bacon, like we wow. have our own mixed cheese blend ready to go. Oh hell yeah. So we do them. So yeah, things like that. Amazing. Whatever you fancy. Meatballs, hello. 
three cheese pork meatballs in an arabiata sauce. Rebecca, can I have the meatball? You can. White bloomer or the multi seed bread? Do you know what? I'm not big into seeds, I've got to be honest. Bit of, uh, bit of standard white bread, guys. Yes, please. Yeah. yeah. That's, that's fair. Let's yeah, let's do that. Would you like anything else, darling? Um, just that, what's that coffee you were talking about there? So we've got a biscoff latte, or we can do butterscotch, got all our flavours up there on the little menu. All oh, right. Well, what's that Black Forest? So Black Forest, that can normally go in a hot chocolate, it's like a cherry flavour. So you can have it in a coffee before. Yeah, a black cherry latte. There you Different. go. Anything else today, darling? I do. I do. Thank you very much. Lovely. Right. So Rebecca's just delivered me this. This is the Black Forest latte, and then you've got a meatball and cheese toasty. Look at that. Look at that stunning piece of grub. Take a look at that, everyone. Take a look. Take a damn good look at that. Oh yeah. Give it a try, shall we? Oh my. That is absolutely outstanding. The meatballs are so beautiful and soft. If you've gone to Ikea and had their meatballs, their meatballs, there's a kind of a toughness to it, maybe even a gristly taste, I don't know. But I like pure meat meatballs. Beautiful soft taste, incredible flavor. The flavor is so punchy, and that little kick of spice at the end as well. Right, let's try this Black Forest Latte, shall we? Look how frothy and lovely that is. You see that? Oh, that is lush. Oh yeah. All right. Do you like Black Forest Gatto? I can't really say anything else other than Black Forest Gatto has a coffee. That's what this is. And if you like that, you'll love this. Let me tell you about the toast story. It's owned by Rob, Dan and Louis. And one day, Rob woke up and said to himself, why are there no cafes just selling toast? Toast, tea and coffee. Simple concept. And here we are. Epic. Check it out. Beautiful place. Thank you very much. You are welcome. Loved it. I shall be back. Love. Right, see you later, Bex. See you later, darling. Nice to meet you. Take care. Bye. Bye. So what can I say about Braintree? Full of history, culture, warmth, energy, and characters. I've had a brilliant time here, it's been superb. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and I shall see you in the next video. Cheers.